Meta has just released a quick preview of four prototype headsets shown by the man himself, James Halliday. I mean, Mark Zuckerberg. In this video, we'll take a quick dive into the details of the showcase and go over each of the headsets to see what we can find. So let's get straight to it. Today, I want to show you four VR research prototypes that we're working on to invent displays that are as vivid and realistic as the physical world, and much more advanced than traditional computer screens we use today. First, we need retinal resolution, and that means getting up towards you know, about 60 pixels per degree. So we built Butterscotch. That's this prototype that lets you comfortably read the smallest letters on an eye chart. So Butterscotch. It's clear that this is an attempt to compete with Vario's headset, as the slight few seconds we saw, there was a similar comparison to what Vario released a few years back, and 60 pixels per degree, which at the Quest's field of view would give us a roughly 6K screen, which, to be honest, isn't far from the Cambria's 4K screen. The Vario for comparison has 64 pixels per degree, although this is only at the center of the display. Second is focal depth. Normal monitors are a set distance away, so you just focus in one place. But in VR and AR, you need to be able to focus on things that are very close and very far from you. With Verifocal and eye tracking tech, our halftone prototypes let you focus on any object at any distance. Second, half dome prototype. This has been shown in a few Oculus Connect events. The initial showcase shown a moving lens that could create the sense of depth of the field. Then, the following year, they've shown us that by stacking the lenses, you could create a similar effect without the need for mechanical parts, reducing the form factor. Focal depth is something that will add realism to VR, as current headsets have a fixed focal plane, which you do notice if you look closely enough. They also managed to utilize this headset with the new pancake lenses, which would also allow for a greater field of view. Next is high dynamic range. Nature is often 10 or 100 times brighter than modern HDTVs and the highest end monitors. And we need those colors to be just as vivid to feel realistic. So we built Starburst, the first HDR VR system that we know of. The goal is to fit all of these technologies into a device that is lighter and thinner than anything that currently exists. Next, Starburst, like the sweet, I guess. HDR is something I've not really thought about in VR. But my god, this headset is a beast. I'll glaze over this one quickly, but in short, HDR can give any scene more luminance and contrast, if set up correctly. It will give a far superior color range to standard screens. So we built Hollow Cake 2, a working experimental device using holographic displays that can already play PC VR experiences. Now there's still a long way to go, but I'm excited to bring all this tech to our products in the coming years. Holographic displays. That caught my attention. It seems Facebook development is finally paying off, as a few years ago, this was the proposed display solution for AR glasses. Holographic displays work sort of like those old arcade machines, where instead of the image being in direct line of sight of your eyes, the image is projected through a series of lenses and mirrors. What this does is allows for tiny projectors instead of huge displays to create a larger image. This is the obvious reason for the smaller form factor. This headset also looks very similar to the Cambria. I'm not sure if that's just a coincidence, or this could have been an early revision. To summarize, it's good that Meta's transparent about their new advancements with all the cutbacks at Meta Reality Labs, but it does make you wonder if this showcase is more for the investors than the consumers. I'll leave that for you to decide. If you like the content, smash that subscribe button, and I'll catch you on the next one.